Hello, welcome to Sophie & Co. I'm Sophie Shevardnadze. Talk of UFOs hovering in the skies have been exciting researchers and the general public for decades. Are we being watched from above and are we ready for encountering the unknown? I ask Dr. Stephen Greer, director of the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence and the Disclosure Project. It's quite likely that humanity is not alone in the infinite universe. That somewhere among the myriad planets, there is another full of life. And someday, we may meet those who live there. But has that day already been and gone? What are the chances that they are among us now? And why hasn't the world found out? Dr. Stephen Greer, director of the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, welcome to the show. Great to have you with us. Um, so, Dr. Greer, you say you. that we're not alone in the universe and that there has already been many contacts between us and aliens. Uh, you got to admit, though, that for most people, this claim is pretty far out. I mean, what can be done to prove once and for all that the aliens are real and already discovered? Well, that's a great question. And in fact, that has happened. Uh, if you look at there's a documentary that has just been released uh, uh, in 2017 uh, called Unacknowledged. And it, it's the first word in Unacknowledged Special Access Projects, which is a term used in the military in the United States for very top secret projects dealing with the UFO and extraterrestrial issue. And you'll see that there we have over 950 top secret military people who come forward with testimony, documents, photographs. Uh, we have even done analysis on an extraterrestrial uh, biological specimen. Uh, and this, there's incontrovertible evidence that we're being visited. And uh, frankly, everyone in very high ranking uh, classified projects know this. The public hasn't been told because they've been wanting to keep the secret for reasons of technology and the macroeconomic petrodollar system. The secrecy has really nothing to do with quote unquote aliens. It has everything to do with geopolitical power well, we're gonna and get, money we're gonna, as usual. We're going to get to to geopolitical power and why, and why we're covering up the aliens because of that. But still, I mean, wouldn't you expect an event of this cosmic magnitude to be pretty much impossible to cover up? It hasn't been. I mean, one of the interesting things, at least in the United States and most countries, uh, more than half the people believe we're being visited. 65% uh, of the public believes that there's intelligent life out there. Uh, in fact, 43% of Americans believe that we are currently being visited actively by non-human advanced civilizations. So you, you, people use the word cover up, but in reality it's hidden in plain sight. You need to make a distinction between official acknowledgement of something and what the public already knows. My job, uh, I'm an emergency doctor, trauma, but I left my medical career to expose this big cover up, as you call it, uh, some years ago. And we have put together dispositive proof and evidence. Uh, at, you can go to our website, seriousdisclosure.com, and you'll see thousands of pages of government documents and dozens of top secret military uh, testimony of, of the facts. And so I tell people this is not about a belief system, it's about what the facts are. Now, you, the question that you're asking is why haven't official governments acknowledged this? That is a different question from whether or not the subject has been disclosed. We've been working for 25 years to disclose this information and the public has, has uh, accepted the fact that we're not alone in the universe, uh, the vast majority. Uh, in fact, if you look at uh, even on Unacknowledged, this documentary, it's on Netflix now, around the world has had tens of millions of people see it. And on pirated sites, probably over 100 million people. So I, what I point out to people is that this information is out there but the governments have not seen fit to officially recognize it because it would disrupt the status quo. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the world picture that you are painting and ask some questions about that. First, um, are aliens just visiting Earth or they have settled here permanently? No, these are a reconnaissance and uh, civilizations that are visiting the planet Certainly, it increased after we started detonating atomic weapons. Uh, there's clear evidence that they have a concern about our destructive capabilities and weapons of mass destruction. 
And if you look at the, the modern era of sightings of so-called UFOs, those increased markedly after we developed atomic and, and uh, nuclear weapons and the hydrogen bomb. That is, uh, that's a fact, and we, can, we have many top secret witnesses who are present at nuclear facilities where uh, these extraterrestrial vehicles would come in to observe and to see what we're doing. So I think there's a lot of people, of course, the science fiction would make you think there's some kind of risk of an alien invasion or threat. It's the other way around. We're viewed as the threat. The human civilization right now is viewed as a very unstable civilization that has not uh, attained uh, a peaceful world uh, situation which should have happened at the end of World War II and has not yet happened. So I think that these uh, civilizations are waiting for us to grow up uh, as a civilization, and until then, uh, there's not going to be any overt action by them unless some catastrophic event were to happen. So how many different alien species are here visiting Earth? What do they look like? What's their culture like? What methods of communication do they prefer or use? Well, these are all really complex questions. Number one, the last I heard is that there was a documentation of, of more than five dozen different civilizations of different species, and they range from uh, all kinds of shapes and sizes. The, many of the spacecraft that are seen are not the typical round UFO. Some are triangular, uh, some are circular spheres. These civilizations range from hundreds of thousands to millions of years more developed than ours. And it appears that they are working somehow together in observing the planet. But uh, the, the caricature of, so say, an alien that's been put out there, that's mostly a counterintelligence uh, perspective that's been done by the CIA, to be honest with you. I would say that most of the information people see out there on the subject is disinformation created by the intelligence community for its psychological warfare value. But the, the ETs themselves, these civilizations range in, some have been documented to be as short as a foot, foot and a half tall, and some that are more than 12 feet tall. And uh, there are many different species from diff different star systems. Now, the communications, this is where it gets very interesting. Because you and I are talking at the speed of light, basically, uh, electromagnetic, or less. If, if you're dealing with civilizations from another star system, their technologies are phasing trans-dimensionally across dimensions beyond the speed of light. Now, this has been something that is not wanted to be exposed because it has huge implications technologically. Uh, for example, we often will say, well, the, the state of the art of communication for us are, is an iPhone or a telecommunication system or a satellite system. Those are actually very antiquated systems based on an eight, mid 1800s, late 1800s uh, telecommunication, radio frequencies, et cetera. We're dealing with civilizations that are communicating with technologies that go beyond the speed of light, but also interface, uh, interestingly, with directed and coherent thought. So you have to ask the, your, the question, what is the speed of consciousness and thought? So this gets into some very advanced concepts in quantum, post-quantum mechanics and in so-called entanglement, where you can go beyond the speed of light, which has theoretically been stated by Western scientists not to be possible, but I would, argue that it's only being argued from the point of view of, of the myopia of the current scientific paradigm. You're dealing with civilizations that are so far advanced from us that almost every manifestation uh, of how they might appear would, could, could appear magical, so there, but it's not. If they're it's a science. so advanced, if they're so advanced, and you're saying that aliens have visited Earth with reconnaissance missions, if this is just, is this just that, or do they want something from the planet? If a civilization that manages interstellar no, they, they, flight not. exists, then that makes us a real, you know, backwater of space. Yes, it is, except here's the problem. We're going into space, aren't we? We have the space station. We're going to Mars with unmanned and eventually manned vehicles. We've landed on the moon. My uncle w helped design the thing that landed on the moon with Neil Armstrong in it, the lunar module. What I tell people is that when we started going into space, combined with weapons of mass destruction, 
a red, red flag went over the earth that said, we are at the point where this civilization could potentially be a problem. So I believe that we're viewed as a problem civilization that's in evolution. And the big task for humanity is to go from a fractured, you know, kind of ape-like civilization where we're fighting each other over stupidity to a peaceful civilization that goes into to, to space peacefully. When we reach that uh, hallmark, uh, that milestone, then you're going to see a much more open contact occur from these other civilizations and uh, the human species. So according to your words, there is this special organization that keeps the lid on the UFO story. But surely aliens would not just stick to America. And if they're out there, other major governments of the world should have been aware of aliens too. So is there an international secrecy agreement or each government has their own alien policy line? It's a transnational organization. So let me make a distinction between international, something like the United Nations, and transnational. Transnational sort of transcends uh, geopolitical boundaries. And for example, we have documents that show that the old uh, KGB and Soviet USSR had cooperation with U.S. intelligence on this issue back in the darkest days of the Cold War. So, in, in fact, secrecy on this issue has been maintained by a cooperative entity uh, that is multinational uh, and transnational for many decades. Now, the, the, the crown jewel of activity on this subject has been in the United States because of the technology and, and just, frankly, the macroeconomic clout that the United States possesses. But other countries have certainly had, I mean, we've had, uh, for example, uh, Chile and uh, Brazilian military files have opened up recently where they have tr acknowledged chasing these objects with their jet fighters. We have footage that have been given to us from uh, Chilean generals recently of these ET objects being uh, chased by their jet fighters. In Mexico, we have similar footage. So a number of countries have actually cooperated with opening up their files. But the real research and development projects have been centered in the high-tech corridors in the United States and in very classified projects, which are properly known as unacknowledged special access projects, or USAP. And there are corollaries to those in Canada and the United States, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, and I would presuppose, uh, to some extent, in Russia and China, uh, although to a lesser degree. Uh, certainly countries all over the world have a prevailing interest in having this information come out because the big talk is about uh, climate change, so-called global warming, and resource depletion. The fact of the matter is the technologies for going from one star system to another uh, involves very advanced science and physics that would get us off of oil, gas, and coal very quickly. But therein lies the problem. It's a multi-trillion dollar economic question of bringing out this information. If you acknowledge that we're, we're not alone in the universe and they're here, the first thing a scientist is going to say to any government official is, what technology are they using to get here? When they ask that question, it will be answered. When it's answered, it's the end of oil. So we're going to talk about oil in the second part of our uh, program. We're going to take a short break right now. We'll be right. back with Dr. Stephen Greer, director of the okay. Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, discussing our prospects of finding alien life forms anytime soon. Stay with us. And we're back with Dr. Stephen Greer, director of the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, discussing whether alien life is fact or fancy. So uh, the documentary based on your book series starts with a premise that the power of oil corporations is what is behind an unfair financial system that benefits the few and leaves the American middle class in the dust. Is this whole UFO thing really your way of expressing extreme frustration with what is going on in a normal world? No, it's just an acknowledgement that the world is a faint shadow of what it could be if the technologies that were developed over the last 50 years in classified projects were being used. I mean, we're all using jets and cars, using oil and gas, and we don't need them. We haven't needed them for decades. It's a decision that's been made because to bring out these new technologies would be 
uh, too disruptive to the current macroeconomic system. And I think this is uh, a debate that needs to be joined because increasingly people are concerned about the climate change and pollution and uh, deaths related to air pollution. These are all solvable problems, but they're not going to be solved by tinkering around the edges with uh, solar power or wind power. We need really bold new scientific discoveries that have been studied for many decades and classified projects brought forward to benefit the human species. So uh, one of your main theories you are saying earlier is that the powers that be don't want the public to know because of oil revenues. Alien technology would kill oil business. but. Some governments like oil revenues and then others don't. For instance, China would be very happy if it didn't have to buy oil. So it can't all be about that, can it? It's about the macroeconomic system that is dependent on the petrodollar system. And that's from Bretton Woods at the end of World War II, if you look at history. So it's not just even countries that are not oil net exporters, for example, like China or Japan. They're tied into a macroeconomic system that is very dependent on the current energy and industrial paradigm, the, and in particular, the petrodollar. So these are things that would change very quickly with the disclosure of the fact that we're not alone in the universe and we've been studying and have figured out how these uh, machines operate. Let's be very frank. They're not using uh, Exxon uh, Jet A fuel or uh, Russian oil or Saudi oil to go from one star system to another. This is common sense. And the people I've spoken to in the research and development world uh, in classified projects, and as I mentioned, we have over 900 of these top, sort of top secret whistleblowers on our team. It's quite clear that these technologies have been fully developed, but bringing them out would disrupt the status quo. And so big economic interests all over the world would have to adapt very quickly to a whole new economic system. So you also say that American president is not being told about all such findings. You even prepared a special briefing for President Obama and you spoke before Congress. How did it go? Well, you know, what, what I found is everyone wants to know. I'm in Washington right now uh, about this issue. This is the biggest non-secret there ever was. Everyone knows this is going on. All the way back to when I was first putting the briefing together for uh, President Clinton and his CIA director, uh, it was well known that there, was, there were deep secrets on this issue, but for the most part, the elected officials, at least in this country, aren't given control over those projects. Uh, if you doubt this, go remember what Jimmy Carter uh, said after he became president when he tried to look into this. And President Carter said that uh, when someone asked what it's like being the most powerful man in the world, he said, I wasn't that man because there were things that they would not tell me about and I had no control over. So this is a really big problem for a democracy and for governance all over the world, this level of secrecy. And it's reached the point, in, in, at least in the United States and the United Kingdom and, and a number of other countries, where the secrecy is not of itself criminal. I'm saying this very specifically, and, and has subverted the Constitution and the rule of law and proper oversight. And this is what we found with uh, the, the President Obama and with Clinton. Uh, also, uh, if you look all the way back to uh, the time of uh, Eisenhower, he got very frustrated dealing with this issue, and this is why he made the famous speech, Beware the Military Industrial Complex. He was a general. He was not anti-military, nor am I. I'm from a military family. However, there are interests that have become very undemocratic and have been a threat to world freedom and also now to our geophysical existence in terms of, of the biosphere that have been allowed to go on for way too long. And this has been a problem all the way back to President Eisenhower in this country and similarly in, in other countries around the world, this level of secrecy. All right, so tell me this. If this story is kept so secret that even presidents aren't informed about the issue, why are you still alive? I mean, why are you allowed to make documentaries that stream on Netflix? Mm. The CIA has killed people for way less than disclosing a, uh, disclosing a huge government cover-up. Yeah, and there are three people on my team who have been assassinated who have been helping me. 
uh, including a former CIA director. I don't want to go into that right now. However, we have systems in place to protect what we're doing. Um, I have a lot of information that if something happened to me that would hit the internet, that would be catastrophic for those folks. So that's just something we put in place about 20 years ago. And it's something that my view of it is, is there are, and, and this is the other thing, there are people at the Pentagon and CIA I've dealt with who are very much in favor of disclosing this information. So this is not a monolithic us versus them. There's a huge number of people who are on the side of bringing this out all over the world. Uh, I have a, a, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Carol Rosin, who's worked very closely with senior Russian contacts who want to see this disclosed for the same reasons we do. So, uh, and we have similar uh, people in China and the United Kingdom and, and Canada. So I, I don't think that there, it's a, a monolithic issue. I think it's very much in flux. What I'm seeing is that uh, it isn't gonna happen until the people become aware that this is a serious problem, but it also has within it serious solutions for the world's environmental and uh, governance issues and economic problems around the world. You know, there have been higher-ranking military and government officials coming forward talking about aliens um, for about yeah. 60 years. I spoke personally to a former defense minister of Canada who told me that there are dozens of alien species. Oh, yes, he's species. a friend of mine. Right. Oh. So he's, he told me there are a lot of species, alien species visiting the planet. And none of them were able to provide hard, undisputable evidence. But I just wonder, like, how many witnesses there needs to be? I mean, does it really take an alien saucer landing on Red Square or Pentagon for everybody to acknowledge the existence of outer civilizations? <laughs> No, it doesn't take that. However, it does take the people to get educated on this in a way that's meaningful, which is why we're putting out these educational uh, uh, films and products. I think that uh, Paul Hellyer, uh, the Minister of Defense of Canada, a very good friend of mine, he and I held a press conference in Toronto, and I was one of the early people to introduce him to this subject. And he knows for a fact that he was being kept in the dark as Minister of Defense of Canada. I have dealt with the Minister of Defense of, of Great Britain, Lord Hill Norton, who was a five-star admiral, who also was being lied to about these projects. Now, in terms of hard evidence, we have them. I have radar cases and I have traces of the actual physical material. We have, you know, when you say that we don't have the physical material and, and evidence, we do. But who's looking at it? Who's exposing it? Like, there should be a series of shows that does nothing but put that forward. That's what we've started to do, because those exist. Not just government documents and testimony, but physical evidence, such as the radar tracings. And, and uh, recently, the Pentagon released a, a, a radar case off the coast of California, where our, one of our fighter jets uh, tracked uh, one of these objects uh, moving in a way that no conventional aircraft could possibly move. And this was in the New York Times and CNN and elsewhere. My point is, is that there's a huge amount of evidence like this and even physical hard evidence. And, and we have it. I've been accumulating it for decades. The question is, who's going to do a story on this? Because ultimately what happens is that at least in the United States, if you start doing a deep dive into the evidence on this, that show is going to get canceled. Everyone thinks we have a free press in America. We do not. We have a managed press. And if, if CNN started drilling down on this subject, they would be told to stand down off of it. And I've seen it happen. ABC News was pursu pursuing this with us. I gave them 35 hours of digital tape of top secret testimony and hard evidence and the executive producer of ABC News was told you will not be allowed to do this story. So there's a myth around the world that the media is somehow completely free, the big media and mainstream media is free to uh, do this and that is not the case. If you look at the documentary on Acknowledge, we have an Air Force intelligence official who said we used to bring from the US bags of cash to people in the media to secure their cooperation in keeping this stuff secret. 
Now, this is a fact. This guy's testimony is there for anyone to see. And he was uh, with many years in a classified project at a Kirkland Air Force Base, managing counterintelligence and trying to, to stop leaks on this issue. So th these facts are out there for the public to see now. I hope people will look at it. And, and I think that uh, your people need to understand that we need to create a new type of media that actually is honest and will tell the truth to the public about this. All right, Dr. Greer, thanks a lot for this insight and the interview. We were talking to Dr. Stephen Greer, director of the Center for the Thank Study you. of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, talking about alien civilizations and our prospects to get in contact with them anytime soon. That's it for this edition of Sophie & Co. I'll see you next time.